Welcome everybody to otakosandgeeks.com presents Justin versus Sean. This is episode three. I'm Justin here and I'm here of course with our co-host. It is me, Sean, the true comic book fan, here for another episode. Hey, what's going on? It's Jarrell, aka the icon. I'm glad to be back. And not it. And got them geek girl, <laughs> uh geek enthusiast, comic book uh Oh crap! Sorry, guys. <laughs> <laughs> no, Comic books and crap. <laughs> my my iPad fell. Oh, it's okay, <laughs> but um, that's that's got them, geek girl. Um, so epis, this one is going to be a little bit uh, different. We're going to get back to the verses um, next episode for episode four, but this time, um, since a uh, light of events that happened, we wanted to do something a little bit different. Um, with the passing of Chadwick Boseman, we want to highlight more of black. Latino creators and characters. And before we get into that, we're going to talk a little bit about Chadwick Boseman's passing. And I'm going to pass it to Sean first. I'll let him go first on what his thoughts were when he found out about it and, you know, what he thought about Chad. And so, uh, you know, just like most of us, um, in the beginning, we thought it was just um, another hoax, celebrity hoax death, you know, was in there like Chadwick. Like, come on, man. Like, the dude just did, but, you know, he's in, He's filming Black Panther. Like, how is he? Like, unless you're telling us it's an accident or a set, there was nothing. But um, then it's, you know, for all of us, once TMZ reports it, <laughs> you know, every you know it's true. And uh, they said that he passed away from, uh, what was the stage four? Uh, colon cancer. Colon cancer. So it was it was tough because I'm, I'm trying, this man has played so many iconic characters. He went from Jackie Robinson to Thurgood Marshall. I mean, just even, I mean, even, um, what's his name? Uh, psst, damn it. I'm forgetting. James Brown. Yeah, James Brown. Was, was thank like, you. To like get on up. Yep. I was like, to James Brown and this man's acting chops were just phenomenal. And to hear that he passed, I mean, first of all, this man was an inspiration to a lot of young black kids out there bringing a character like Black Panther to life. I mean, for those of us who have grown, you know, for me, like, I started reading a lot of comic books in, like, the late, late 80, let's say early 90s, you know, and there weren't a lot of characters out there, like, that look like me. Let's just say that, you know, like, I had my favorites. I had uh, one of my favorite characters of all time, uh, Green Lantern, Kyle Rayner. So I'm not into, you know, my thing is I have my favorites for everything, Lobo, Wolverine, anybody else, but there weren't a lot of characters out there that looked like me. I mean, we even in Marvel, you had um, Black Goliath, but <laughs> like there was no, he was more of a, a B-list character for the Avengers, and it was just like somebody to replace, uh, what's his name, Ant-Man. Yeah. And, but when you had Black Panther, like you were just like, okay, this is a great character, and as he evolved in the things that they showed with him, it was just like, wow, okay, this is a character for, for me. But to bring him to the big screen and for that movie to be such a hit, like, I don't care what anybody, like, there were people who you had haters out there, yeah. but they, for that movie to be such a hit and to give, like, when you saw, like, the neck, the following Halloween, like, kids, like, there were kids, every race, color, or creed, yeah. you know, like, grabbing Wakanda forever. <laughs> I mean, that was, that was just, that was amazing to me. And it was something that I said that he left that with us that we will never forget. There's no point in, like in history we will look back and go, this man bought Wakanda to life for us. He gave kids hope. I mean, he's probably going to inspire the next comic book kid to create a character that's going to be the next iconic black character. And, you know, me, I just want to thank him for that and thank him for doing the things that he did. And, I mean, being a true to life hero. He was suffering through cancer through all of this. Never told anybody, didn't want any sympathy, didn't want people to go, Oh, okay. You know, like he has cancer. Oh, I feel so bad. He went to children's hospitals without telling anybody. And then he passed away quietly. That is a hero. That is a man who you can't say anything other than he was a true life hero. He didn't want anything. He didn't ask for anything. He just did it because that was the thing to do. And we're going to miss him for that. Yeah, I was, I, Sean was the one who actually told me. Mm. <laughs> like he, um, he called me and he was just like, oh, did you hear about Chadwick Boseman? And then he told me about the cancer. And the first thing that popped into my mind was, I was like, well, 
this obviously isn't true because this is Hollywood. Yeah. How does a Hollywood actor have cancer for four years and nobody knows about it? So, you know, but then later on when it just started coming out more and more and then, then it turned into, wow, he had cancer for four years and nobody knew about it. You know, so he was, and, and that's, that, like, that in itself, you know, is it, it's crazy because, like, these days you can't hide anything. You know, and he was able to hide that. But it also so it also showed that he didn't he didn't want to advertise it because, you know, he didn't you know, he didn't want people to feel sorry for him. Like he wanted his work to speak for itself based on what he did. You know, and, and I said, I'll you know, I'll never I mean, I, I saw all the movies, too. Like, you know, all of his movies. It's just, it's just one of those things where it's like it's, it's too surreal. Like, you know, like, like you wake up every day and you're like, wow, I can't believe he's really not here. You know, but yeah, I mean, I'll um, and I, said, I feel I feel the same way everybody else does feel about it. It's just like. It's just that hard pill to swallow, <laughs> you know, especially for, um, you know, for the minority community, like the black community, because we fight so hard to get ourselves represented on screen. Mm -hmm. And then when we finally have somebody, you know, who's like, you know, paving that trail for us and opening those doors for us, then we lose them, you yeah. know. And then now we're looking for, you know, who's going to be the next person to, you know, to pick up the mantle. But well, probably it's, it's, it's tough. It's tough. Um, Nadia? Um, yeah, this one, like, hurt, like, you know how some people are like, oh, like you shouldn't cry over celebrities. And it's like, <laughs> F you, like people can cry over celebrities. Like this one True. was like heartbreaking. Like so many friends, like we were texting each other, calling each other. One friend checked on me to see if I was okay. Like he was somebody that like, like you said, like he was so inspiring to so many people. Like this, this one hurt like Stan Lee. Like we mm. felt like we lost a family member. True. Like he's done so much for people. And um, like you said, like him going to hospitals and everything, and then us finding out that he had cancer, like that hurt so much more because we're like, he was suffering and he didn't care because he cared about his people. Like he wanted to, to you know, be um, a real life hero and, and do something that had meaning. And um, it was crazy. Like it was literally on Jack Kirby's birthday mm -hmm. and on Jackie Robinson day. So it was just like, it was just so much to take in. It was really crazy. So I, I, I think the main thing for everyone to take from it is like, just keep um, supporting people and like being there for your loved ones. Cause like you really never know what someone's going through. And for me, I, when I, like I was sleeping, I woke up the next day and I got a text message from Sean about, it. I was just like, okay, this gotta be a hoax. So just like, just like Sean said, when TMZ says it, I was just like, oh crap. And then it just, then I was like, okay, what did he die from? I was like, was it a car accident? And then yeah, it was like, yeah. he had colon cancer. I was like, so this, like Jarrell just said, this man had cancer for four years. No one but his close relatives knew. And he didn't make a Facebook post, no Instagram post. And I, you know, and I always have this saying, there's people who, work in Hollywood mm. and are not Hollywood. And he was definitely yeah. one of these people. Like he was one of the quote unquote, you know, he was the real one. He was like one of those people who went to work. Hollywood was just a business. Yeah. yeah. You never see him in the spotlight. You never saw him like yeah. in the tabloids or anything else like that. And just the impact that he had, like, yes, of course, Black Panther is a huge, you know, that was his biggest, biggest, role today but yeah definitely just like look back at other roles that he's done like 42 that's how i was introduced to him i mean i didn't i didn't watch soap opera so i didn't know he was on all my children but <laughs> uh, <laughs> but yeah i saw i saw some of those clips in all my children i was just like wow he just really stepped it stepped this game up from all my children but um yeah like 42 get on up um marshall like he really wanted to bring those stories to life and he was actually working on another like i think it was um it was in post it's in pre-production is another car uh, another real um african character i think um it's about a king you know okay and that he was um very passionate about but i don't think they're gonna um obviously film it anymore but he he was really focusing on really just trying to get black stories out there and that's something just like wow the fact that he did all this and no one knows about like Sean said. That's 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 just a measure of a hero, or just a measure of a person that he doesn't bring attention to himself. But you know, yeah, he if, gives back. If you take anything from it, is selflessness. You know, mm -hmm. you know, bring you know, being like Nadia said, being there for your loved ones. You know, being supportive. So you know, that's definitely. Um, I 
That's my thoughts on that. And then he quietly married the woman he loved. Yeah. Like, while he was sick. I mean, that's one of the things that, you know, a lot of people, I mean, it was off and on. But he, you know, a lot of people can't say anything. He he dated her. He went places with her. He made it official. And then she was with him in the end. I mean, he quietly just said, my relationship will not be out in the open. It won't be yeah, something yeah. that people can, Didn't like, you know comment anybody. on. Yeah, and, <laughs> you know, he did it, and she was there for him in the end. And, I mean, that's true. That's inspirational and true love in itself. I mean, in a day and age where people don't, really connect like that anymore yeah they just post you everything know, you know people you see celebrities together they're just together for the clout oh, yeah. yeah and mm-hmm. they weren't together for the clout for this this was true love and i mean he should be remembered i mean we all made a lot of posts and i think there was a post that i put up where um it was stan lee welcome welcoming him into heaven and he was like you know did I do a great job? He said, you were the best. And I mean, I think that's something if Stan was alive, mm-hmm. he would have said, you were the best. You you will always be the best. And the fact that, damn, when you think about it, it's the last four years, we've lost some great ones. Mm-hmm. And now, you know, the world feels, you know, at one point I got up, I was like, yo, fuck 2020. <laughs> <You know? laughs> Seriously. And I was like, you know, we've, We've lost some great people and we've lost some great things. I mean, we've lost the ability to interact with each other. We we lost a lot of the cons, the places that we went to, and then now we lose Chad. I mean, at a certain point, I'm like, damn, can't we, December can't come fast enough, yeah. <laughs> you know, for this. So, Tell me about it. And that's about it. But, you know, um, we all want to say rest in peace, Chad with Bozeman. Yes, indeed. You were the best. You still are the best. And it, forever until the end of time it will be wakanda forever indeed king yeah. peace <laughs> here, here, here's, here's a question though like what do you guys feel about the petition oh to like, because to don't recast them yeah because to say because you know because like you just said you was like you know you 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 know you referred to him as the best which is which is true but there's also that thing where someone else might step into the role and you can I'm, I'm i'm honestly i'm 50 50 on like i'm i'd be fine with it either way because the for me the issue with the petition is I appreciate the people doing the petition, but the petition is more for Chadwick Bozeman, not the character T'Challa. You know, every like the, the that's where the focus and, and I feel like Chadwick Bozeman would want a new black actor to you know, to step in and take the role because all although we unfortunately lost him, I don't think we should lose T'Challa the character. But with that being said, if his sister took over, I wouldn't be mad at that either. I'm, I'm not completely sold on his sister taking over, although I know she's taking over in the comic book, and that's the comic book compared to live action. In live action, she was good in her role yeah, yeah. Mm-hmm. as Shiri, and I think Shiri by herself is a character that she should constantly explore. I mean, even when they gave you the kind of look of what A-Force would look like, yeah. Um, I'm not sure if I want... I'm not against it, but I'm not sure if I want yeah. Sherry to take over. Uh, I think Justin sent me something where they said that use the Infinity Gauntlet, use the Infinity Stone to bring if he if he's dead because yeah. we never really got a confirmation to bring Killmonger, bring Killmonger back. Oh, okay. and oh yeah, he, I keep hearing theories like that. Yeah, yeah, and that if his you know his psyche changes because he wasn't a bad Black Panther, he did, he and, he fit the role, and it's always also the relationship between Chad and I mean. Michael B because he knew him since he was 17 yeah so Mm -hmm. there is that big brother element of the little brother taking over Mm -hmm. for the big brother so that that that, I mean I think that would be the most respectful way to honor him but you don't think they should just just get a black actor I mean if you're gonna if you just to be a new new T'Challa or you could just have the suit or just have somebody in the suit and just who you gonna get well the thing I mean honestly though I feel I, I think the fans will accept it better if it was an if it was an unknown like a like a new person like hell like get an actor who's actually from Africa, you know I think I think people would accept that more versus like like a like a quote unquote famous actor and the other problem mm-hmm. with that is all the famous black actors who could take the role they were all in the damn movie. That's true. <laughs> That's true. Yeah. <laughs> so so I'm like I'm like who, like who like who you gonna I, pick I mean, who wasn't in that damn film? I, I mean I think the best bet right now is they're gonna have to do. Something something's gonna have to be done with Doctor Strange to rewrite mm-hmm. since they're yeah. dealing with multiverses. Yeah. Doctor Strange is gonna have to be the one to explain what happens to the on uh, T'Challa yeah. and how yeah, it, I mean, it changes it up. 
Yeah, or Scarlet Witch. I mean, I mean the thing the thing is, I don't I don't want a Fresh Prince of Bel Air joking line like you know remember, remember when they changed the Aunt Bivs? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> and you know, and they looked at you. I mean, they did the same thing in uh, Roseanne. Well, like, because did. there were two, there were two different Beckys. Well, they did mm-hmm. that in Iron Man too. When, um, yeah, when, when Rhodey, Ro- when Rhodey, he yeah. was just like, oh yeah, he's like, you, uh, you went to the beach or something like that. Yeah, something exactly. like that. <laughs> you know, like I, I, I'd appreciate the joke, but I think like coming from that point with 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 uh, Chadwick, it would be like, okay, it would. Be, I'm pretty sure he would be laughing yeah. at it, but I think so. <laughs> oh, no. Yeah. But, but I do, they, I do, they do they like the... They have to make the joke. Yeah. yeah it's going to have to be done very... I think very, tastefully. Very de- yeah. yeah, very respectful, very yeah. delicate, and they're going to have to explain. That's what I said. They're, they're, since Marvel is approaching the multiverse storylines mm-hmm. and stuff like that, you have a movie called Doctor Strange and the Multiverse of Madness, and you're having Scarlet Witch starting to show that she can alter reali- realities mm-hmm. and things on her show soon. So you're going to have to use those two characters. And just, I guess, if you're going to recast, that's how you bring in the yeah. new, the, the but new do you Black think, but, but do you think? But do you think it's worth going through all that? I mean, for, from, versus, from, from, versus, uh, like versus just hiring a new black guy to play him? No, I mean, like from a story standpoint, you're yeah. going to have to explain what happened to this Chichala? Because otherwise, but no, but that's but that's only if that's only if they decide to yeah. quote unquote kill his character. But I'm saying inst- instead of killing his character, just hire a new actor. Yeah, I don't, I don't think just, they like, should kill that, his. Yeah, character. they're yeah. not going to yeah, kill Yeah, yeah, like just just hire a new actor. That, it's just a let him continue. billion dollar franchise. They're <laughs> yeah. not killing off his character. But but you also have to realize the reason why it's a billion dollar franchise is because what Chad did. brought to it. Yeah, and that too. He's and you can't sit oh. down. Like I don't mind Sherry being there. Um, what's going to be amazing is the um actor playing Shiri will have to bulk up because you can't because Shiri is really small, <laughs> yeah. you know. And in a comic book, she's very she's very well, thick. Look, she's well, very that, but that doesn't matter because don't they get the strength from the purple? No, no. Well, he burned all he burned all the flowers. Yeah, kill, kill <laughs> he burned yeah. all the flowers. Which is so. which is why I think Justin's idea of Killmonger being brought back might work better than anything else. And or you're just gonna have yeah. to recast and the scene. Everybody yeah, loves I, yeah. everybody loves Michael B. So yeah. I mean that I think it'd be easier to just recast him. Yeah. But the problem with Michael B. Jones' character is he played Killmonger so well. I won't be able to see Yeah. Because um one of the actors at my job we spoke about we spoke about this and it was kind of a Malcolm versus Martin thing. And T'Challa mm-hmm. kind of played more of the Martin character, which yeah. he was very it was very good, and Killmonger played more of the um, Malcolm character, mm-hmm. and I can't see him stepping into that role and being the understanding and respectful. Not that he wasn't respectful, but the mm-hmm. understanding king and willing to put it put anything out there. I mean, I'm kind of it's, it's like a loss for words to say. Like, yeah. I don't. I like Michael B. Jordan as, as um, Black Panther, but I don't think he'll bring the same. Yeah, essence to yeah, yeah to the character. Like so. I see him like a Magneto. Like it's like yes. you somewhat agree with his ideals, but it's his execution. Yeah, that's like the problem. He, yeah. he took it too far. Yeah, and I mean, I don't. At a certain point, it really did make you question: Was he really taking it too far, or was he, or was he just doing what was the best thing for his people? I mean, your people have been under under oppression for over four hundred years, and they're still that way, and you have the the power and the ability to take them out of that and we're just going to sit and watch. I, I wasn't rooting against him the entire movie. I was kind of like, you know what? Like, what if he, what if he succeeded? What would the world look like? Would he, would he be a good King? Would he have, or would yeah. he have just said, let me take my people out of this and no. build Wakanda and build Africa into a bigger nation. No, he wouldn't have did that. And I, didn't, I didn't, I didn't buy, I didn't buy his speech or, you know, like, or anything he said, because like yes, he said all the right things that made you think, but at the end of the day, he killed like, his girlfriend. Yeah, that yeah, like he killed his greedy. girlfriend. I mean, that know? was funny. I mean, but at the at the end of the day, um, based on all the things that he did throughout the film up until that point, but it's like, bro, like you're basically like you're saying all the right things, but the truth of the matter is, you're basically just mad because you were left behind. Yeah, I mean that was that was part of it, but you know <laughs> that was that was yeah. that, that was where that was where I mean, it stemmed yeah. from. In you his would, defense, have you seen Wakanda? Yeah. I'll be mad <laughs> yeah. too. Yeah, you know. <laughs> You no, get, but but he but instead of just saying like, "Oh, y'all turned your back on me and I'm mad," yeah. he tried to mask that by being like, "Oh, I'm trying to bring our people." Okay. You know, the, I'm like, like I'm I'm like, this. I'm yeah, yeah. my man was living in the hood in Oakland <laughs> while they out there living good with mad good technology. I'm gonna be pissed and burn it all down too. Yeah, I mean, but you, but that's the perspective you got to look at him for. Like, you lived a great life, and I suffered under you know, as they say, the colonizers' mm-hmm. rule. 
and you had all this, why didn't you come get me? Yeah. Why didn't you come do this? So yeah, I'm mad about that, but I'm also going to do this for those who I'm not going to leave anybody behind. I'm not going to let anybody go through what I went through because if I'm king, I'm going to make sure I'm going to take this technology and I'm going to free my people. Yeah, but he wasn't even trying to do that. Like, I mean, he yeah. was. I mean, he was sending he was sending the troops out to to go like free everybody from what was going on and basically take over and say, "Look, you've had enough time of beating us." putting us down now it's our turn yeah. and we have the technology that you don't and like guess what like good luck you know I, at one point i wanted i think he was gonna say uh, bring on those damn avengers and let's see <laughs> let's see what let's see what you're gonna do but it was i can see him doing it but he, he's not gonna be my first choice my i will agree yeah. that we probably need to get somebody who a different person to play. Yeah, just get a fresh, just get a fresh, fresh face. face. Yeah, and let him build it up. Let yeah. him become yeah. new. Because because if you if you cast somebody that everyone already knows, like a known actor, then there's going to be a comparison. Yes, yeah, well, there's going to be a comparison regardless. No, there, there there is, but it's not. But you're not going to hold that against a fresh face. Like it was the first one. Like you're not gonna you're not gonna compare him. Like people will like un- somebody that really embodies the role. That's yeah. not just the famous name. Yeah, yeah. you know, like I, I think the because. Because people aren't going to be happy when they recast him, but that's the best way for them to accept it. Now, the person who played his the young version of his dad, he looked just like his ass. True. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> like I just bring him back and just let him be T'Challa. That's true. You he know, looked. He looked just. He looked just that like that. Could it. actually make sense. Yeah. <laughs> it, I mean, it works, and we can see what happens. And I again, and I didn't. I didn't know who that guy was. You know, he just seemed like he was just a, a, a known, like a, an unknown actor who just, and he looked like the damn king of Wakanda. <laughs> that, that's true. But, you know, we all can agree we're going to see what happens. What I do hope is that if they do bring out Black Panther or the next Marvel movie, they do a tribute uh, comic book panel like they did for Stan. I, in, I think um, they will. In, uh, what do you call it? Was it Miss Marvel's movie? And yeah. I think, yo, listen, I'm for the first time I'll say I had goosebumps when they were showing everything with Stan. Yeah. And then at the end, it says, thank you, Stan, before you start mm. the movie. I was like, that's how you start yeah, a Marvel movie. Yeah, yeah. They'll probably take some clips from about, I think what they'll do this time is different. They'll use clips from his other movies. Um, Cause he's not black. I mean, otherwise you're just going to use the black Panther movie Endgame and infinity war. Cause that's the yeah. only three he appeared in. So but I think they'll probably civil war. Sh- yeah. Or, or civil war too. And show some stills and things like that. So it's going to be a very interesting. It's going to be an interesting year where we finally get back into theater. So we finally yeah. get see back what's going on. That. Yeah. So but it's, it's going to be on, but to segue on to the to, next on a lighter note. <laughs> yeah. On a lighter note. Cause I, I think we all kind of feel that like heaviness as we felt yeah. like, a, a, was it over now a week and a half now? Oh yeah. Yeah. Like we kind of feel like, uh, like, <laughs> like you just know, you're just like, yeah, why? But now yeah. onto some more, Fun yeah, and, and so, more educational, because yeah. just for those who don't know what we're about to yeah, you know, so, drop some names. Yeah, so we decided that this week in honor that we're going to talk about uh, black, brown, and Latino comic book artists, independent or, you know, mainstream, whichever one. And we're going to highlight a few of them on there. So for some of them that are out there listening, if you do get a chance, we're going to tag you and let you know just to take a listen to this podcast. So we want to highlight a few people that we've actually run into and had a... Uh, interaction with, especially at Comic Con, there were there were a few people I ran into that um, kind of walk. You know, I was walking past their booth, and I kind of liked their approach to me. It wasn't like the approach that some other people had. Like they were, hey, but read my comic book, and they like <laughs> throwing it in your face, and you're like, oh, sir, I I can't read with the book that close, and like I, I really don't need this in my face. Like I, you're kind of turning me off, and a couple of. Uh, writers actually just called us over. Hey bro, you know, like, listen, um, where are you from? And they just started a genuine conversation. And he was like, well, the reason why I called you over, I noticed that you had a press pass and you know, they kept it real. He was like, yo, listen, you know, I got to be my own marketing and promo and everything mm-hmm. else. So I just want to introduce you to my comic, you know, and they didn't try to do the, you know, look, you know, check this out and give me props and here's a free thing. They say, Hey, look, you know, we're all out here trying to work and struggle. Um, would you mind, do- if anything, donating or buying a comic book from me and, you know, explain the whole concept? And I was just like, of course, sure. You know, let me support. Because the thing is, one of the things I hate is that people don't support anything until it gets big. Yeah. yeah. Be, you mm-hmm. know, mm-hmm. and nobody's there at the beginning when the person is like, I'm putting out a good product. I'm putting out something. Oh, isn't that the truth? <laughs> yeah, I'm putting out something 
that might be interesting. They don't want to support it. But then when people who don't know the person putting it out gives it praise and starts putting it in, that's when everybody wants to come over. Oh, yeah, I remember. You know, all of a sudden you want to remember when you ran into him at Comic-Con, but you didn't put that money down yeah. to help him get that comic book off there. He had to hustle to do it. So what I think we're going to do in this segment is we're going to highlight some of those artists because just in case nobody else is talking about you, we are because a lot of the stuff I read is really good. So I'm going to start it off where um, I I ran into his name and I'm not sure because this was last year's Comic Con. So I want him to forgive me if I'm saying it, but this is uh, David Crossan and Kirtland Ellis. The they came over and they they gave me this book Harriet Tubman Demon Slayer. <laughs> which which I kind of looked back and I was like, wow, what? <laughs> like, you talking about Underground Railroad, Harry? Yeah, Tubman? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> like, <laughs> like, and he's like, yeah, he was like, so he explains the concept of the story of Harriet Tubman. You're like, was she high? Like, yeah, like <laughs> you know, <laughs> being this demon slayer. And, you know, um, I do, rem- I, I will say this, you're going to have to forgive me because I did read this comic book over eight months ago because I was really into it, but it really stood out. And I'm hoping that he has put out more since then and I will check on to see it but um, this was a really well done comic book and I'm hoping that this gets to mainstream I know a lot of people say stuff like that has been done because we all remember Abraham Lincoln Vampire Hunter yeah, or yeah, whatever yeah. it was yeah. and I was just like no if this wasn't under the same thing this was <laughs> just like Nadia I'm not sure you um, you are deep into the indie comic book scene um, you you know who I'm talking about with this or yeah, I met David. Um, I met him at Anime NYC, um, and I, I picked it up right away. Um, we got the chatting. I went to one of his events at Forbidden Planet. He did a signing. Um, it's really good. It's really good. The art's, like, great, too. Yeah. I think he has three issues now, if I'm not mistaken. Yeah, I, th- I think I bought the first two. I, I might be mistaken. I have to go back home and look in. I think I had all three, or I had bought two, and I just remember, like, yo... He signed it and he said, you know, he said, thanks for supporting me. He was like, but, um, you know, thing he said, thanks for, talk- if you, if you talk about it, cool. If not, I do appreciate that you're buying and supporting because it helps me get this stuff out there. And I had no problem with that because we have to support people. We can't just say, okay, if they're not a new face introduced by Marvel, mm-hmm. we shouldn't sit down and say, okay, don't give them because there are a lot of stories that are really good out there that we just ignore because it doesn't have a Marvel branding or DC branding to it mm-hmm. or milestone or valiant. Oh, you know, we, we need to look into that because they get this big by, yeah, yeah. by everybody buying it, reading it and giving them props. And, you know, they're, they're just looking to put a good product out there. And I mean, we all know the comic book industry is tough because <laughs> when I was younger, I wanted to be a comic book artist so bad. <laughs> and a couple of artists came to me and was like, mm, this is this is not a prop. It's profitable now. Yeah. We can look at the Jim Lees, the Todd McFarlane's, mm-hmm. and the Rob Liefeld's and say, it is profitable now. Especially Todd McFarlane, who has done a lot. I mean, he should be given props for everything he's done to bring, to bring stuff to the comic book world and be profitable. Mm-hmm. But it wasn't back in the days. I think at a certain point, if you were a comic book artist, you made as much as minimum wage. <laughs> to, to, yeah. To bring this stuff out. And I mean, because I've seen a lot of stories where there are a lot of big, famous comic book artists that have gotten sick and they've had to have a GoFundMe to kind of help them mm. get over. But this is the way I think we can get some of these artists out there to help support them and bring light to them. So I want to bring light to if anybody is out there, please, if you can find it online, we will find links for this and we will give it to you on our Instagram and on Facebook for Harriet Tubman Demon Slayer by David Cro- uh, Croson and Cortland Ellis. So give it a chance, pick it up. Like I just, I just want to bring that as the person that I'm highlighting because I actually read it. There are a couple of other black artists out there, but I'm going to turn it over to Justin because we could talk about a lot of them out there. So I'm going to turn this one over. To I'm going to um, highlight the book Niobe, um, which is co-written by, um, I'm going to botch your name. I'm so, so sorry. Um, Amala, the, uh, Amala Stein, Stenberg. She's ruling the Hunger Games. She played Rule in the Hunger Games. She she co wrote it, and this is more of a, a fantasy type of comic, which I wanted to highlight because we don't really see that much of us writing like on the fantasy yeah. elf world type of genre. <laughs> so it's basically a, about this half human, half elf 
um, girl and half goddess, half devil. Mm. She's a whole bunch of stuff. She's like a, a, a she's a, pr- a prophecy, child of prophecy. She's basically trying to prove somebody um, innocent, but at the same time, she has to worry about her own dirty laundry coming yeah. out as well. So it was a really uh, okay. well written story. And um, Ashley Woods is the artist. She did a, a great job, and it's um, I really enjoyed it. Is it anybody you want to highlight? <laughs> or I mean, if you don't, it's fine. Yeah, like, if you have yeah. It. I mean, I don't. I mean, I mean, like you said before, like I'm, I'm so busy independently doing my own stuff. <laughs> <laughs> you know, like I mean, if anybody who wants to go on my YouTube channel, um, Red Eyes Entertainment, I do have the trailer from my independent film that I did. You know, so I said I wrote it, I acted in it. You know, I directed it. Sean shot some of it for me. Like, I pretty much worked on it, you know, worked on that entire project, like, myself, and uh, I think it's pretty good. <laughs> and, let me, and let me tell you, that trailer is really good. It's it's definitely, you know, sometimes you see your friends do stuff, and you have to do that. Uh, yeah. <laughs> it's like, you know, it's like a parent. You got to be like, oh, that's, yay. <laughs> like, like, it's good. <laughs> but, um, but I sat down, and I watched the trailer. I was like, holy shit. Like, dude, like, this is... Like you did your thing with it, yeah. you you know. As we say, you put your foot in it. Yeah. <laughs> like you, you did, you yeah. did a, you did a really good job. And I want to 